sexual purity now this is what i want to talk about in today's video and if it is something that you want to hear more about as a christian you want to know why should you be sexually pure or why should you keep yourself for marriage or why should you honor god in your marriage because when we talk about sexual purity a lot of people think it's only reserved for the single people and we forget the fact that sexual purity is first of all a honor to god it is for all of us all of us need this message all of us need to know why should i be sexually pure is it for my wife or what is the reason now the first thing is that god is not restricting you but god is protecting you this is the first why what is a better why to have when you are saying i want to observe sexual purity because growing up i could remember that the only reasons we were given was avoid <laughs> like it wasn't even a reason they just tell you this is a law avoid and it felt like god is restricting me without even letting me know why are you restricting me god created sex and i have to make this point that sex is not bad god made sex and god cannot make something that is bad everything that god made from creation scripture makes us know that god would turn and look at it and say it is good so god cannot make sex and say no oh i made a mistake here this one is actually bad no you guys should stay away from it it was presented that way and then when we talk about the topic of sexual purity it made it look like it's anti-sex so it is bad you should never do this then when you get married overnight it becomes good it doesn't make sense it doesn't make logical sense so then why should i be sexually pure it is god's way of saying i am protecting you because when god created sex beyond the pleasure that sex brings we have to acknowledge the fact that sex or anything about your sexuality is pleasurable that is why when scripture talked about sexual purity it is up against sexual immorality not just intercourse or fornication it goes beyond fornication adultery it goes to the aspect of talking about everything about your sexuality that is not according to the blueprint of god your satisfaction for your sexual need is in a committed relationship that god created called marriage which is a husband satisfies the wife and the wife satisfies the husband which is this is a legally binded union that there is this long-term commitment that is where sex is safe to be entered into because god knows that beyond the pleasure of this thing that he made there is a power in it when god says i am protecting you i am not restricting you i had to think to the area of realizing that for me saying i am actually observing sexual purity god is protecting me from getting a false sense of intimacy that is what came to me that's what god dropped in my heart now i have walked this journey for a while since i grew up and understood god and i hate it at first i'll be honest when i hate the aspects of you know avoid sex and all of that and they give the reasons so that you not get pregnant for or you give you not get somebody pregnant for a man because that's what i was literally told and i figured out like if you are telling me i should avoid sex so that i won't get somebody pregnant all you are trying to tell me is that if you can enter into sex without getting someone pregnant then it's okay for you as a man so i realized that this reason or this why was very weak at this point these other people that said you know if you do these bad things are gonna happen to you you're gonna get sick and i realized that everything that was given as a reason can actually be avoided because these reasons were like options you it's possible that the sickness gonorrhea and all other sexual sickness you can get them but then there is a possibility to actually avoid them also so if there's a possibility to avoid them then it is not a real valid or strong why for me to stay away from sexual sin when i think about it on the aspect of god saying i am protecting you because beyond the pleasure that you're going to get there is a power behind this thing that can monopolize you takes away your focus and then makes you so engulfed in this that is why every sexual content on the internet gains a lot of views because we are sexual beings biologically so now tell me why it makes sense when you are telling me avoid sex without giving me a strong why and then it will be easy for me to just avoid sexual sin whether it's pornography whether it's masturbation 
whether it's you know bestiality or any kind of sexual activity that is outside of God's blueprint, which is marriage. The other angle is that at some point the sexual message looked like they were talking to the ladies, to the women, to the girls, and then the boys were like left off the hook that you can go ahead, do whatever you want to do, you are a man, and all of that. And it makes it look like it was giving the men a free hand to go about doing whatever they want to do sexually because they had not much to lose according to how it was painted. And the ladies were like the ones that had a lot to lose because it felt like, oh, they are going to lose their you know, dignity, virginity, and all of that and get pregnant as a teen. But then, when you look at it from God's view, God is saying, I am protecting you. It looks like other people are doing this thing and it seems like they are getting away with it. Young people get into this sexual scene, you know, fornicate and do whatever they want to do and they still get married. So it does not stop them from getting married. People do this thing and they are still living well. They are still becoming rich. They are still being successful in the world standard. But then, why is God then saying, I am protecting you? I realize that when God made sex, God actually made sex so powerful that Whenever you are having that intercourse, there is a mystical part to it. And it's recorded in scripture, which Paul actually reiterated. Let me read that in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Paul said, there's more to sex than mere skin on skin. Sex is as much spiritual mystery as physical facts. As written in scripture, the two become one. Since we want to become spiritually one with the master, we must not pursue the kind of sex that avoids commitment and intimacy leaving us more lonely than ever. The kind of sex that can never become one. There is a sense in which sexual sins are different from all other sins. The truth here has already been painted. You think you are looking for intimacy. You, you are trying to fill a valid need by going to sex because it actually there is a valid need in you and you are using sex to try and numb it or to try and use sex to feel good for yourself, but now you are going to it and it makes you feel lonelier. Now this part is heavier than you just thinking about, oh, you're going to get pregnant. Or maybe for the man that says, I'm going to go scot-free after having sex, I've had the pleasure, I've gone scot-free, nothing to lose. You've actually got yourself emptier than you found yourself in the first place. So God is not restricting you, so to say, but he is protecting you. He's trying to say, when you involve yourself in sex, because it is powerful, you get yourself to have a false sense of intimacy. You feel like you feel like you really know this person. You feel like you're really acquainted. You are connected because of the sexual act that you went into, but not knowing that from the head view and the commitment part, since you're not committed, then there is a vacuum there that you're going to feel like you are emptier because the connection you feel is like an empty connection. It's a false sense of intimacy. I'm already sweating. This is the environment is really hot right now. But the second point is that sexual purity is a test of your loyalty to one. Now, the truth is that Paul actually writes in 1 Corinthians 7 that the single person minds the things of God. The single person is loyal to God. That is a simple word to use. While a married person is loyal to his or her spouse and to God. Because the married person will have to please the spouse and then please God. While the single person is loyal just to please God, the married person is thinking about how to please the spouse. From the focus that this scripture just gave in 1 Corinthians 7 from 32 to 38, I just realized that when you are single, for you to be sexually pure means you are becoming loyal to God. That is the number one person you are loyal to. You are playing your allegiance to God. You are telling God, I am loyal to you with my life, with my body, with everything. That is why Paul actually wrote it in 1 Corinthians 6 that when you stay sexually pure, stay away from fornication, from all kinds of sexual immorality, for masturbation, pornography, that you are honoring God with your own body. That no other sins gets to affect your body than this one. No other sins touches about your body, but this one alone, it affects your body. And then when you honor God with your body, this is your loyalty to God. You are saying to God, I am being loyal to you. Now we see this in the story of Joseph in Genesis chapter 39. The scripture lets us know that Joseph was a very fine young man and you knew what? 
a beautiful woman because Potiphar's wife was actually beautiful. She was not just, you know, a smell smell or somehow woman that I just got to him and said, Oh, Joseph, come lie with me. And Joseph would be like, You're not even fine. Like, why should I lie with you? I'm not even feeling attracted to you. No, she was attractive. So Joseph even had to run. But now it is Joseph's reply to her that got me to come to this point and this mindset. The scripture says in Genesis 39, Joseph was a very handsome and well-built young man. And Potiphar's wife soon began to look at him lustfully. Come and sleep with me, she demanded. But Joseph refused. Look, he told her, my master trusts me with everything in his entire household. No one here has more authority than I do. He has held back nothing from me except you because you are his wife. How could I do such a wicked thing? It would be a great sin against God. Honestly, I thought Joseph would say I would sin against my master. And to me, that there would be an option around that because it would be like, if you are going to say I will sin against my master, what if the reply is your master is already sinning against me with other ladies outside. So let me just use this opportunity to pay him back. You know, he doesn't deserve you being loyal to him. But Joseph said, no, my loyalty is not tied to my master. My loyalty is not tied to anybody. My loyalty is not tied to, as a man right now speaking, is not tied to my future spouse. Because whatever I do now, they will not even get to know. If I don't tell them, if I even lie to them, they may not know. I could tell them like I was single all my life. You know, I've never had sex with anybody. I'm a man, really. They're not going to know anything. Even as a woman, women do this. I've never had sex, but they have had multiple sex and all of that. And apart from just having intercourse, some people have not had intercourse, but they have had sex, which means all manner of sexual immorality, pornography, masturbation. They have done all sort of things. You know, now that sex toys is on the loose, they are doing a lot of things. I don't know if this video might be flagged because of the use, the language usage, but if you're watching this, if you're seeing this video and if it's helpful, I want to share this video to other people for them to see and be blessed also. If this is helping, then hit the thumbs up also. So continuing to speak about Joseph's loyalty to God, Joseph said this would be a great sin against God. So my master is not even in consideration in this regard. It is me and God. Whatever I do now is going to affect my relationship, my union with God, because my loyalty, first of all, is to God. Now, to the point that sexual purity is not just about the singles, but it's also for the married. When you are a married person, now your loyalty is both to God and your spouse. But whether as a man or a woman, you are to be loyal to God and be loyal to your wife or your husband, because that is why it is called sexual purity, the marriage bed undefiled. As a single, you are not supposed to dabble around with sex and your sexuality. You are supposed to hand over that part of your life to God and let God handle it for you. God deserves to have you be loyal to him and then have you be loyal to your spouse. The third point is that sexual purity is a training that God is giving you for your self-control. Now, when I thought about this, I realized that if I am not a single person that is self-controlled, because the reason Paul gave for people is that for lack of self-control, get married. So that you will not get, you're not born with passion. Instead of born with passion, since you don't have self-control, get married. But if you can be sexually pure in your single season, it is a training of self-control because you still need it while you're married to be able to be loyal to your wife or be loyal to your husband. You won't always be with them 247. Sometimes you would need to travel out, go for a business meeting for a short time and all of that. What if your urge catches up with you and you, you feel the passion, you feel aroused and all of that. If you do not have self-control, the excuse that my wife wasn't around is not going to cut it. The excuse that my husband was not in close range is not going to cut it because you get to have a short time with someone else. The fact is that God uses sexual purity to train us. Not as if God said, oh, when you are sexually pure, be naive about sex, be naive about everything. You know, so that when we even mention the word sex, you're like, oh, we are holy people. No. So in this course, God trains you to discipline your body. God trains you not to give in to every desire that you have. Because 
Sexual immorality catches people up that they always want to satisfy the desire. Whenever the desire comes, they immediately they want to satisfy it. Whenever the urge comes, immediately they want to satisfy it because it is frustrating to be honest. Being a single young man that have made the decision, I don't want to have sex before marriage, sometimes it's really frustrating on my body. It really hits hard. And I know that a lot of young ladies can also say the same. The frustration is not easy, but it's going to teach you self-control. You don't have to give in to your flesh. You don't have to give in to your desires. This is actually part of dying to your flesh, dying to your selfish desires, dying to your sensual desires, and being alive to God. When God trains you here, you can have discipline in other areas of your life beyond your sexual life. You can then learn discipline and learn the art of delayed gratification. That I don't have to get an immediate gratification right now. I don't have to satisfy myself sexually right now. So the next point is that sexual purity is to honor your body and your dignity. Now, scripture makes us know that this is a sin against your own body. And then when I read 1 Corinthians 6, it made, it, it made sure to go to the aspect of saying that my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. To honor this temple, it's just like having my home. And I allow my home to be dirty and all sort of dead. I've not cleaned it for weeks, for months. I will not be convenient living in that home. I will not be convenient going home. I would like to stay away from home, like even to stay outside, <laughs> kind of. But then, going home and enjoying to go home is because when my home is clean and conducive, I can always go home and know that there is a spot for me to get relaxed, you know, free, and just be myself. So, this is the temple of the Holy Spirit, and this is your body. Every time I get to do a cleanup in my house, the cleanup process is not easy. It gets so tough and sometimes tiring to even clean up the whole house, carry the chairs, you know, pack up the doors, clean the tables and all of that. And doors will still find its way in, but I'll still have to do the cleaning. I'll still have to clean it up because after cleaning up, whoa, I will feel so free, so excited. Like there's just this comfort that I feel when my house is clean. And scripture says, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God, which literally saying, when you are pure in heart, it didn't say perfect in heart. Pure in heart means there is a process of cleaning, which means you're doing the work of cleaning your heart, of making sure your heart is clean, of, you know, listening to the word of God, allowing God to sanctify your mind and wash you over with his word. Now you'll be happy to have a clean heart, a clean mind. Same thing with having a clean house. So same thing with your body. When you are honoring your body and observing sexual purity, you'll be happy thereof. Now, scriptures in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18 says, Run from sexual sin. No other sin so clearly affects the body as this one does. For sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price. So you must honor God with your body. He did not say honor God with your spirit. He said with your body. So you are honoring God with your body and you are honoring yourself and your dignity because you're honoring God. God owns your body now. Yeah, it's my body. I can do whatever I want to do with it. No, it's not your body. God bought you with a price. If you call yourself a child of God, a Christian, bought by the blood of Jesus, redeemed and set free, bought with a high price that is greater than silver or gold, that redemption cost God his son. So you owe your body to him right now. <laughs> and this is not for me to sound, trying to sound, you know, stained and strong, but it is the truth. God owns your body right now. Let me say it calmly. God owns you right now. You belong to him. And he doesn't own you like a slave. He owns you like a son, a daughter, like a father would tell the son, you belong to me. Not like a slave that, you know, I'm going to use you as I would like. I will restrict you. I'm going to, you know, do to you as I want. No, not in that sense, but in the sense of love. I really love you and I want to take care of you and I want you to do well in life. So getting to realize that your body belongs to God, that God actually owns you, it should give us a, a heart of humility to say, I now have a better why. 
my body doesn't belong to me. I can't just do whatever I want to do with my body. I can't just sleep with anybody I want to sleep with, saying, God gave me the body. It's my body. I can do whatever I want to do with it. No, I am now belonging to God. I'm a son. I'm a daughter of God, bought with a high price, greater than silver and gold. Because he bought me with this high price, I don't belong to myself. I am a son. I am his daughter. I don't want to break my father's heart. I don't want to miss what my father has planned and prepared for me. Because God has so much great things ahead of us that he has planned for us and he do not want us to be distracted. That is why Paul gave the room. He said, I am not restricting you. If marrying is what will help you, if you cannot control your passions, then get married. If you can control your passion and you don't want to get married, it's okay. It's fine. The whole essence is that you will not have sex the wrong way. And you will not be distracted from serving God. And I will read that scripture now. I am saying this for your benefits, not to place restrictions on you. Paul said this. I want you to do whatever will help you serve the Lord best with as few distractions as possible. But if a man thinks that he is treating his fiance improperly and will inevitably give in to his passion, let him marry her as he wishes. It is not a sin. But if he has decided firmly not to marry and there is no urgency and he can control his passion, he does well not to marry. So the person who marries his fiancée does well and the person who doesn't marry does even better. So Paul is trying to say here, whether you're married or you're not, the whole essence is that, is that you can serve God with as few distractions as possible. Because when you dabble around with sexual sin, it, it's a distraction to you moving ahead for your destiny. So I hope that this video is beneficial and that there are things you've gained from this video. I'm already sweating. Let me know what you think in the comment section and then I would love to speak with you and then listen to your thoughts and how you're managing your sexual purity and the struggle. And this is to tell anybody that maybe feels like they have failed along the way. You really wanted to do this and along the way you could not control yourself and you couldn't get married, maybe financial or whatever reasons and all of that. But whatever reasons that didn't let you do that doesn't mean you should beat yourself up. God forgives and forgives totally. And when God forgives you, he gives you a new room to start again. He's a God of a second chance. If you feel like you failed God over time and you feel like you cannot even come to the place of living your life and becoming sexually pure to God, no, you can. It is beyond virginity. Oh, if you've lost your virginity, you're done in life. No, 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 no. It is about purity. There are many virgins who are not pure at heart, who are not pure with their body and everything to God. They are only virgins because they have not fornicated. And that is not me trying to talk down on being a virgin. If somebody knows the true act of sexual purity from growing up, they will actually be a virgin because they will not have any need to do anything about their sexuality that is immoral or in the wrong way. And I hope that this video is a blessing to you. I am Uwe McPan once again. Hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. I would love to see you more. And then to bring more topics that are helpful for your Christian work and mine also. Thank you. God bless you. Bye-bye.